Good evening. I am Amadine Ubewe. Now, tonight's topic is a very interesting and exciting one, and that is the issue of space. Space advocacy, to be precise. Uh, we see a lot of stories, a lot of movies, and a lot of um, commentary about outer space, about the big, vast, unknown, and the possible uh, opportunities that could come from it. Well, there are a lot of people now who are not just looking at it from a point of view of storytelling or, you know, uh, piquing the interest of many. Now, uh, people are considering very seriously the opportunities that could come and could help people in various forms in terms of uh, monetary opportunities, job opportunities, opportunities to further your dreams in one form or another, and to broaden the imagination and the minds of the average person. It is just as the slogan of um, the station here, Kaftan TV, Imagine a Beautiful World. Uh, this is something that people are doing actively and also working towards. Tonight, that is what we'll be discussing. Space advocacy, particularly in Nigeria, what is in store for youths? What is in store for the average person? What does space hold for them and their future? I've been joined tonight by a space leader and advocate, Mr. Isa Daniel Wede. He joins me now to do justice to the issue of space. Two, one, zero, all engines running. All right, uh, Isa Daniel Lubeje. Good evening and welcome to Top Talk. Good evening, thank you. It's good to have you. All right, um, so, you know, we like to start at uh, the beginning or at the basics so that everyone can be carried along. You're here for space advocacy. Yeah. You know, what does that mean, really? Okay, space advocacy is actually um, all about promoting space science and technology for peaceful use. Um, it includes um, educating young minds on how they can leverage on space and auxiliary technologies to better our world. All right. Um, so th I think the, the question on any viewer's mind would be, how does this concern the average Nigerian? You know, uh, when you see space, we see it in the movies, we see it uh, in um, foreign news. But, you know, people don't really consider it a thing that should be of concern to Nigeria. So tell us about that. Okay, um, space has gone beyond um, observing the universe. 
because the traditional thing is just to look at the stars mm. and 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 savour the wonders, the stars and everything of the there's the wonders of the universe. But it has gone beyond that. Now in this age we harness space for the good of man. There are so many technologies um, that are inclined, space inclined that can be used to better humanity. Um, the UN SDGs, when it was framed, it was included, two space technology, technologies were included, which is um, Earth observation and remote sensing, mm -hmm. were both included as tools to help achieve those goals. I would describe space as that one stone you can use to kill 17 birds in terms of the 17 goals. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you go del deeper into you know, what this entails and um, when people think about the opportunities and so you, you've um, you've um, uh, pointed out two things just now. Uh, what I, I, I couldn't quite get it, but you mentioned two things. Okay. What did what do they mean really? Okay, so Earth observation is mm. is a technology that involves um, having satellites to view the Earth to have uh, like an area view of the Earth, okay. so you can actually monitor um, processes that happens here on Earth. For instance, taking of pictures here on Earth, which can be used. Okay, let me give you an application. You can use that to um, check deforestation. Because when you take pictures of particular place over time, you can now know the trend of how much of um, trees are reducing. Because we have pictures when you, when you do an analysis and you check um, over the years, you see that the forest region is reducing. So you should know that there's a problem. And also, it also can be used um, to, to monitor um, terrorist activities, in the sense, mm. you can actually get pictures to see, to, to, to capture um, activities happening on Earth. Mm. So you can be able to detect what sort of activities. You have images that can tell you this and this is happening, so you can be able to make informed decisions. This is that. different from Google Maps. It's a, no, Google Maps is another, that's positioning. Okay. So Google Maps is also leveraging satellites mm. for positioning, for logistics, positioning and mapping out areas across the globe. Okay. So the second one? The second one is Earth observation. You also have remote sensing. Remote sensing can be uh, employed to check climate change. 50% um, of variables that, that are used to measure um, climate um, change is aided by space technologies. You have sensors mm. that can check air quality so you can know the quality, uh, the, cost, the, the quality or the type of gases, maybe greenhouse gases that are present in the air so you can be able to take mitigation, um, um, mitigation actions when you discover that, okay, this but, uh, gas sorry, is... Sorry to cause but you know, how is this happening? Because what you are describing now, uh, it seems as though it's within Earth. Is it that uh, something, you know, out of our, our environment, you know, within space that is being used to do this? Okay. Or is it more efficient with it being in space than if it were just uh, perhaps, I don't know, something um, within our own, um, this stratosphere is called or whatever? It, it is more more efficient mm. when it is in, in, in a lower, lower Earth orbit okay. or any of the orbits mm. because with um, satellites you have a large coverage. Mm. Sat satellites are the ubiquitous in nature. Mm -hmm. For instance, you have, um, let me give you an example, terrestrial networks, which are your landlines, mm -hmm. your internet sa service providers that are ground-based. Mm -hmm. They don't have wide coverage. That's why you don't have networks in the village. Mm -hmm. But when you use satellites, you can actually have a large footprint to cover. So you, have, you can have um, even a global internet connectivity with satellites. There are no limitations to um, connection problems when you're using satellites. And that brings me back, um, to education. Schools in the rural areas don't have access to internet connectivity. Mm. So we have companies, new space companies that are coming up to provide um, satellite connectivity. So that's what Starlink do. I don't know if you yeah, have Starlink. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very, very practical example of providing communication aid with satellites. Mm. So how can a, a Nigerian here keen to this? Like, uh, what you're explaining now, I can definitely see a kid in America, you know, in the UK, finding ways to get into this. Uh, but we know, take, taking into account our education system here, uh, if I should use my own example, 
uh, when I went to school, the the one of my lecturers had actually taught the head of department, the same head of department. That is to say, a lecturer who is still lecturing mm -hmm. was once a lecturer of our current head of department. Comment. And now, guess what? The lectures or the 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 course he was teaching us, he was using the material he used to teach our head of department all the way from back then. It's you like can imagine the age. Yeah, so when we talk about space and keying into it, how can someone here be able to do that? You know, what should they look out for? Well, well, how do they begin to uh, embrace these opportunities that you're speaking about? All right, I know we haven't um, done much here, but that's why we are here. That's why we are advocating. That's why we're involving ourselves, trying to see how we can use our ex expertise to change the narrative. Yeah. So there are communities like the Space Advice, Space Generation Advice um, Council, which is in support of the United Nations Program on Space Applications, is a committee of young people, 18 to 35, that represents youths. It's a youth-led um, organization that represents youths in the academia, in to space agencies, to the United Nations. So. Inclusive, when, 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 um, when youths um, find stuff like that, they can get involved because um, there's a wide range of possibilities there. Even if you are here, we are here in Nigeria, mm. you can have access to certain materials and resources and opportunities that make you properly informed about the space industry. We have several working groups um, as touching cyber security space and cyber security space law and policy, mm. space and entrepreneurship space and medicine, space and um, the SDGs, space and inclusion. So platforms like this provide head starts for young lads who are passionate about bringing change. Okay. All right. Uh, you've mentioned a couple of things there. Yeah. But uh, one, you know, a, a number of them jumped out and I wish or I hope you can be able to break them down. But let's, let's go back to space law. Space you know, what, what am I wonder? Well, what does what does the law have to do with do space? With space. <laughs> it's, 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 it's for everybody, isn't are they, it? Are they caught in? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. actually, you see, it's, as space is a sensitive, a very very sensitive matter, yeah. and you need policies to guide um, mm. activities. So, um, space lawyers actually, they, 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 what they do basically is is to um, mm -hmm. provide grounds for regulation of activities in because space can be used mm -hmm. as negatively mm -hmm. so they are there to just check mm -hmm. provide policies guideline principles mm -hmm. uh, of our countries or even pr the private sector can use the space also regulation and licensing because you just can't just launch maybe a satellite or something mm -hmm. you need regulation you need licensing also disputes because we have um, slots in space just have, like you have land so you can oh you also need um can contract. i can i get land in space <laughs> if you have a satellite you have to launch satellites oh, there's a satellite okay yeah it's like not actually land yeah, i'm okay, just okay, using I like get it, okay. I get it. okay so there are slots that yeah. are allocated to countries or private uh, enterprises to launch so the space law and policy guys uh, handle that also conflict um takes for take for instance you can have um two satellites collide mm. maybe have a satellite you have one so maybe you said like we might have issues so space law and policy mm. that actually guides of the settling disputes licensing regulations and maybe promotion of inclusion private sector mm. partnership mm. agreements contracts okay all right uh, so talks about and i'm not saying this is uh, verified anyway but talks about um, uh elon Musk, you know wanting to event elon Musk or maybe jeff bezos wanted to eventually occupy maybe mars or the moon you know would i wonder what what could be the legal aspects of that is that something that law would have to take into account assuming someday somehow the technology becomes so advanced that we can begin to have colonies in mars and wherever or places that are inhabitable for human beings is that like a whole Pandora's box being opened there on, on, on legislature and, and different things? Okay, actually, that's one, of, that, that's one of the reasons this generation is called the Artemis generation, mm. because we have the Apollo mission, which took man to moon. Yes. So this generation is the Artemis generation will be 
going to the going back to the moon. Mm. And this one is so special because um, we were having the first black person going to the moon and also the first woman going to the moon. Just to point out to see how space can also um, bring in inclusion. Mm. See, there's no gender bias. No. There's no um, racial bias. Um, back to your question, you're asking how... Um, yeah, perhaps if, if, if um, the laws would have to come into okay, place. Okay, there's something called the Artemis Accord. Okay. okay. So it was signed by some countries and it's actually like a pledge mm. to ensure that Mars, colonization of Mars and Moon are, are, is done peacefully, mm. not for harm, not for any ulterior motive, but just for the promotion of mankind. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I, I guess um, these are international laws that people would have to abide by. But you mentioned other things there, you know, you were, when you were breaking it down. Medicine, how does that, how does that have to do with space? Okay, um, they actually basically research uh, two sides of it. You have um, the one happening here and the one happening there. So um, there's the ISS. ISS is basically a laboratory in space. So medical researches, there are medical research that are being carried out in space, mm. touching cancer, touching on the bone. Why do they have to do that in space? Because there are some certain uh, conditions that are favorable for, for um, um, research, research, like microgravity, okay. and stuff like that. So they enhance their, enhance that. And here, there's something called telemedicine where satellites are used to help um, medical services. You can have a doctor, for instance, in a remote village where you don't have um, mm. You don't have um, expert, medical experts, and maybe there's an op operation trying to, that has to be done. You can have robots. There's auxiliary um, technology, robots that can operate on the person. So a doctor can be in the U.S. with the aid of satellites. He can perform that operation or he recommend drugs or something. Oh, also applications that can help reach out to people in the rural areas. It's telemedicine, medicine from a distance, mm. and that is enabled using space oh, wow. technology. You know, uh, is, are there more of these, you know, all the others you mentioned that you might want to dwell on a bit? We've taken medicine, we've taken space law, you know, what else, what else is there? We, we, we have medicine, we have space law, space entrepreneurship, space story. I think this is that, the exciting that, that is in terms of uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, the okay. new, new space, it's actually called the new space movement where um, space activities is no longer done by the traditional actors. Okay. What I mean, just, just the government Countries, people. Yeah. yeah. So um, we now have um, inclusion of the private sector, yeah. commercialization of um, space products and services. We have space tourism. We have um, space tourism. I, I believe. Um, I think Jeff Bezos and a couple of people paid some humongous amounts of dollars the other day just to go for some sort of. Uh, trip up there and back. I, I guess uh, is, uh, we're expected to see more of that in the yeah. future. There's actually um, a project by mm. Space Perspective. It's actually a hotel in space, in the low Earth orbit. So wow. you can have a very, very nice view. It exists Earth. already. It's, it's a project, an okay, ongoing project, project okay. where you have um, luxury in space. You just mm. enjoy yourself. Mm. Your honeymoon or something. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting, you know. Yeah. I, I wonder if this would ever be accessible to like the average person. Uh, with time. That's why um, we're working towards um, SWAPC, something called SWAPC, mm. where there's a reduction. SWAPC, S is size, P is power, W is weight, mm. and C is cost. So what we are actually trying, that's the new whole new space movement try to do, is to make um, space services and products cheaper. For example, you have now you have reusable rockets. Before, when you launch a rocket, it's, it's almost gone. Mm. You just have parts of it. But now you can launch as many times go, turn mm. up and down, come back. So you can use one rocket for um, s several number of times. Mm. And also, so actually, you have satellites. We have the advent of um, advent of nano satellites, cubesats that can even be built by schools. Mm. Or even individuals, students can give them its cost. Um, there's, there's no cost, no much cost to it. Um, reduction in size, reduction in power, doesn't consume much power. It doesn't weigh, weigh much. So you can have so many satellites launched at once and cost mm. just for, not a penny, but at least. Mm. 
Right. Back to what you were explaining about space entrepreneurship and what's so exciting about it. You know, what's really new these days in terms of that? Okay, um, we have um, um, launch services is, I think, the focal point of space entrepreneurship where you have a company that launches satellites for people. Mm -hmm. So they pay per, per gram based on how heavy your satellite is. Mm -hmm. Then we also have um, data, people sell satellite data, people leverage on satellite data to, to give informed, um, to, 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 to make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Like some analytical processes happens when you have data from space. Some analysis happens that could help um, in consultations for businesses, maybe logistic business, um, defense, and likes. All right, that's a, a fair enough. So, but speaking about, um, you know, Nigeria now, how would you rate, you know, the level of progress made so far with NASDA and now, um, you know, people like you, space advocates coming into the fray, uh, you know, trying to make a difference? You know, if you had to gauge it, you know, what what level of uh, what level left do you have to go to perhaps be on the same or close to the same standing as perhaps any other country out there? Okay, we we might not be as good as other countries, but we are trying our best. Yeah. Um, our space agencies are trying trying. If you can check the news, so many partnerships. Mm. But I believe we can do more. That's why we are here to recruit. Mm. Let me see. A space army mm. of people who can contribute because we have the the human resources we also have um we have the the, the, the mind we have passionate people if you can see around mm. people trying to dive into technology so mm. we can harness the power of the youths to help um, facilitate this whole movement better so when you say you are recruiting you know what, what processes are going into that you know okay and i yeah that brings me to um to an event. There's an event coming up now University mm. on the 27th of October. We've partnered with NASDAQ, partnered with some other um, um, key tech firms in mm. Nigeria. So what we're trying to do is to bring youths together 1835 to be able to see the possibilities space offer. Since we can't go to space for now, we are trying mm. to bring space home. Mm. So people can have an eye-opening moment to see the wonders and the possibility that are beyond the, 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 the stars. So mm. we, we're having workshops, breakout sessions, and some act activities. And, and we're, we're trying to like um, give um, policy recommendations okay. after the program on a global level mm. for, to see how um, space could be used for better applications. All right, um, w when you speak about recommendations, uh, uh, I'd like to take it to another angle now. In terms of uh, education, what you are doing now, you, you said the youth target, I believe 18 to 35 or thereabout. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think could be done, you know, on a, on a much more basic level uh, coming up? Is it um, that there needs to be more space addition into elementary science or there should be like a special subject? What, what suggestions do you have in that regard? So actually, that's what, one of the things you're working on to see how space science can be included in edu our educational curriculum because i think if uh, knowledge is is like the bedrock for innovation mm. if you don't know you can't grow if you don't know you can't go mm. so you need to know first so and it's it's, it's so 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 very important that this in is introduced early stage mm. so they get to know about the stars the moon the stars mm. the very early stage before they can now know how they can gets there maybe in the university level or secondary school level. All right, so, so what, what so an, okay, um, go ahead, plus go ahead. outreaches, we have people doing a lot of works, mm -hmm. um, so many foundations, space-based foundations. Trying in Nigeria or In outside? Nigeria, here in Nigeria. Okay. Um, trying to educate schools about, students about space. Mm. We have them carrying out um, seminars, carrying out outreach programs. A lot of couple of young people are actually doing stuff out there to see how they can promote space science and technology. All right. Uh, um, there, there's a, uh, I don't know if I should call it the elephant in the room, but uh, when, when we speak about space, there's something that uh, we've um, always um, sort of looked at, speaking about the younger ones and others. 
which is um, the profession or the job of being an astronaut. And I noticed you've not mentioned it. Is that also like a key aspect of this? Or we're looking more in terms of other opportunities these days. Is there any pathway to becoming an astronaut in all of this? All right. Um, be becoming an astronaut is just like a segment mm. of just a part mm. of the whole thing. Actually, actually space in, the space industry is, a, is an industry that welcomes all. Mm. Like it has its hands wide open for everybody. Mm. Like we see, the space for all. That's one of the slogans. Mm. So everybody can be, even you. You can be a space communicator, mm. a media person. You can be a space reporter. Okay. At launch sites, there I are people. Can, can I go to space to cover events? Is that is if that that's it? your dream? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> if okay. that's your dream, okay. but there are some certain um, people who, who, um, based on um, launch missions reports mm. like the report they are always at the launch station okay. reporting what happens mm. when and when the um the rocket is about to lift off giving reports to people people watch live i don't know if you have seen any launch mission mm, so yeah. you they, they do that on youtube so that's actually a space for you mm. we have um project managers because space programs are actually projects so you have people project management data analytics and sciences because we collect data we need people to analyze them um, psychologists, because um, going to space, you, you need some kind of emotional and psychological um, oh, yeah. um, training. So you need psychologists, um, doctors, engineers. Engineers are like the popular ones, yeah. guys. Um, analysts and a couple of other professions. Just all, any profession you think of. Yeah. The other day I saw a community of graphic designers. Yeah that are just strictly this for, for the space industry what they do is that they design user interface for applications on board satellites and launch vehicles and they also try to understand the space industry so that they can be able to brand their um prospects better yeah. all right that's a, that, that, that's fair enough um, so wide yeah so very wide but in your in your mission you know to educate nigerians and uh, advocate for space uh, do, you, do you envision or have you encountered any challenges, uh, you know, being that we're a third world country prone to some sort of, um, uh, will I call it superstitious beliefs as some might call it, uh, do you envision encountering any of those challenges or have you encountered them while trying to preach the message of space? Yeah, a lot of times because people think space science belongs to the first world countries, it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with Africa. We don't have the resources. Yeah. Um, some people believe it's the fluke is not real. Yeah. Um, others don't just care. Because I've asked around, most people don't even know we have a satellite, like a national owned asset, space yeah. asset. Yeah. So people don't really care. Little do they, do they know that most of what they enjoy have is from space. So I think I've found a little problem with that trying to tell someone about space, even uh, trying to tell them that you can, your, your expertise is needed in space. They'll be like, no, I'm not a rocket scientist. No, mm. I don't have mm. any business with the space industry. Mm. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Daniel. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I'll take you up on your offer and I'll see if I can become a space journalist or a space reporter. Thank you right, so much for welcome. coming. Thank you. Thank you.